and cut. Jangles, my boy, that was amazing. I mean, week number seven of the life of Joseph, the great adventure, the grand finale. I mean, whoa, you really blew my mind there. With the juggling of seven torches and eating a birthday cake at the same time, not to mention the fireworks perfectly timed with your eloquent speech of the life of Joseph. I mean, who knew you were such a great speaker? I mean, boy, that was the best closing I could have ever thought of. Okay, okay, what's, what's going on here? What? Oh, hi, Adventure Joe, I'm glad you could join us. Are you recording without me? Yeah, actually, we just finished the grand finale of The Great Adventure. What, and I missed it? Oh, I thought me and Jingles could handle it this week. Wait a minute, did, did you just now hit the button? Yeah, to stop the recording. No, you just now started recording. I'm afraid you didn't record any of the other stuff. Oh no, Jangles, what are we gonna do? Oh. You can never replicate that. I'm sorry, Jangles, why don't you take five? Go have a banana. All right, thanks, boy. Well, Bill, I'm sorry the whole grand finale didn't work out for you, but you know, it's funny, not everything works the way we plan them to, but you know what? Things always work the way God plans them to in our lives when we trust in Him. Of course, we've been learning that from the life of Joseph all this time, and we're gonna wrap things up right now, one more time with the life of Joseph. With the grand finale of The Great Adventure, The Life of Joseph. Bill, I think first off, we should recap the entire story in case any of the boys and girls have missed it. So all the way back to week number one when we first were introduced to Joseph. That's right. Joseph lived in the land of Canaan with his 11 brothers and their parents. Oh yeah, and remember, Joseph's brothers didn't like him very much. That's right, all except little Benjamin, of course. Joseph's brothers hated him so much that they even decided they wanted to kill him. Oh, but remember, they decided not to kill him and instead threw him into a deep, dark pit. Yes, and then after that, they sold him as a slave to a group of traders who were going to Egypt. And Joseph ended up being a servant in Potiphar's house. Now, Potiphar's house is not the name of a coffee shop. But if I'm not mistaken, that is where the phrase, a cup of Joe, was invented. Uh, Bill, I'm pretty sure you made that one up yourself. But anyway, he did a great job at Potiphar's house and was even blessed by God. Everything that Joseph did prospered and even Potiphar did well because of Joseph. But then, da da da, Potiphar's wife tried to convince Joseph to steal something that wasn't his. But Joseph knew better and he wouldn't steal from Potiphar. Although, Potiphar's wife lied about him and Potiphar ended up throwing Joseph in jail after all. And then Joseph started singing the blues. Put the harmonica away. All right. But while Joseph was in prison, God still blessed him. And he even met Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker and interpreted dreams for them. Oh, oh, but don't be alarmed, kids. It's a cupbearer, not a cup bear. Big difference. Joseph interpreted both of their dreams, and both dreams came true. And the cupbearer was supposed to tell Pharaoh all about Joseph, but instead he forgot for two whole years. What kind of person forgets someone for two whole years? I mean, I admit, one time I left my grandmother at the airport for like two whole hours, and she was like, where'd you go, Bill? And I was like, ah, I'm sorry, I forgot your grandmother. I'm sorry Bill, about that. Bill, we probably need to get back to the story. Oh, you're right, Adventure Joe. So anyway, finally after two years, the cupbearer remembered because Pharaoh himself had some crazy dreams. And the only one that could interpret those dreams was Joseph because he trusted in God to help him. And Joseph interpreted all of Pharaoh's dreams. And then Pharaoh promoted Joseph to be second in command over all of Egypt. I mean, that's like being the vice president of the United States. So Joseph was doing great in Egypt and he was in charge of so much. One day, his brothers came to him to ask for grain. Now, they didn't know who he was, but he recognized them. And Joseph was in the perfect position to get his revenge. But instead, he forgave them. Not only did he forgive them, but he also helped them all move to Egypt so that they could escape the famine and be blessed just like Joseph. And they all lived happily ever after. So you see there, Bill. Joseph trusted God, and God was able to do amazing things in Joseph's life. You know, Adventure Joe, this whole series, I've been 
kind of wondering what's going to happen in Joseph's life. But now I know Joseph really was on a great adventure. And the whole time, he trusted in God and trusted God's plan for his life. That's right. And boys and girls, the greatest adventure we can all have is when we choose to trust God with our lives. Because God's plans are better than any plan we could ever have for our lives. In fact, that reminds me of our big idea, which is actually the same big idea we had on the very first week of Great Adventure. It's, I can trust God's plan for my life. Whoa, Adventure Joe, I love that big idea. And I think, boys and girls, we need your help one last time. We need to all stand up and say our big idea, grand finale style, oh, I like which that. means big and very loud. All right, ready on the count of three. One, two, three. I, I can, can trust God's plan for, for my life. life. That was amazing, boys and girls. It's been so fun hanging out with you for the last time. I'm Adventure Joe. And I'm Bill. All right, you take care, boys and girls. Hey, do you want to go get a banana split with Jinkles? You know, he would really appreciate it. It might make him feel better. Yeah, after all that happened. All right, let's go.